Welcome to part 8 on proteins and enzymes. Here we're going to look at an introduction to enzymes. So enzymes are very important because they increase the, um, the rate of chemical reactions without being changed themselves. And um, most biological catalysts are um, protein enzymes. And um, enzymes are important because within our body, we don't have the luxury of raising the temperature really high or using strong acids or bases because it would be bad for our health. So we need, um, we need enzymes to um, catalyze the reactions occurring in our body. Remember that catalysts, right? So enzymes are catalysts. How do they work? They work by lowering the activation energy. And they do that by binding one or more substrates into an active site. So substrates, right? So the reactants of an enzyme catalyzed reaction are called the substrate. So basically the reactants um, are, are pulled and stretched in the active site of an enzyme um, using the interactions we've learned about in secondary and tertiary structure, right? Hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Um, and what this does is it lowers the activation energy to increase the reaction rate. So if we look at this symbolically, here's our substrate. And then we could look at, this would be the active site of the enzyme here. And so here they're separate, right? So we have our enzyme and we have our substrate. And so then when they come together, they form the enzyme substrate complex. So now at this point, it's held together by those non-covalent interactions. Right? Held together via non-covalent interactions. And then when we're all done, right, the enzyme is unchanged. It looks like it did before the journey started. But the substrate looks very different now. It has formed, it has formed one or two more products, right, new substances. Okay, so when we think of the word substrate, just think of our reactant. And then as our substrate forms the enzyme substrate complex, and then we end up with the enzyme back like before, but now we have products. Okay. So it's all about what we've learned in learning about the structure of proteins, right, these non-covalent interactions. So we really want to have awareness for the R groups, right? So the side chains, that's another way to say the R group. So when we're looking at amino acids now, we either want to physically or mentally circle the R groups because, right, because that's what creates the tertiary um, structure. And so take your knowledge of tertiary structure and apply it to the enzyme substrate complex, right? That the same thinking works for both. All righty. So then when, we, when we're looking at these R groups, we just want to spontaneously be um, classifying them, right? So anytime we see um, all carbons and hydrogens, we know it's hydrophobic. So for these first two um, side chains, we see them as hydrophobic. Here we see a OH, so that's polar and neutral. And then if we look at this one here, we see it would be basic. Okay, so um, if we think about the first amino acid as being part of the substrate, Which of the other three amino acids, A, B, or C, would we expect to see in the active site of the enzyme? Right? So we know like, like interacts with like. Like dissolves like. Okay? So we would expect um, amino acid A, all right, because 
it can share hydrophobic interactions with the substrate. Alrighty, so now let's look a little more closely at the enzyme substrate complex. So there are two models um, to describe this interaction. Um, the older model is um, called the lock and key, and this was the first one um, proposed. And it's a very, um, this is a very rigid a rigid model that we um, we think about that the the enzyme and the substrate have to have a perfect fit, just like a lock with a key, right? So it's very it's a very rigid idea, but we have learned right in our study of conformations and the movement that we know that these molecules are flexible, and so a newer model for describing the enzyme substrate complex is called the induced fit. And it has to do with the idea that notice like uh, physically the shapes aren't perfect matches because we know that the enzyme um, is a very large molecule and so the enzyme is flexible and, corn and can um, and can um, change its shape to accommodate the substrate, right? So just to make sure that everybody's clear, right? This is our substrate represented here. And then this is our, that's our enzyme, the large part. Okay, so now let's look at this, all right? So this part here, is representing the active site of the enzyme. So let's go ahead and we'll just circle all that. Okay, so here's our enzyme represented in blue, right? So we're looking at the active site of an enzyme. Okay, so and now we're going to look at it over time, all right? So, and then this part here, right? So here is our substrate. Okay, so how, right? So the substrate comes in, and we notice here's a hydrophobic pocket. So this hydrophobic interaction right here helps to hold the substrate in the active site. Right, so it helps um, helps form the enzyme substrate complex. Okay, so through the through the lunging forces, this um, this nonpolar group here helps to interact with the hydrophobic pocket, and then we can see through H bonding. So here we have an oxygen and nitrogen, and so then notice what happens right here that we start to have um, a reaction occurring, and here's our cleavage site. And so while this portion of the substrate is being held through the nonpolar um, interactions, we have a um, bond forming between the enzyme and the substrate. And then notice we get cleavage, and so now we have a free peptide, which would be our product. And so that's an example of how while one part of the enzyme is holding on to the substrate, another part of the enzyme can actually perform the reaction. All right, and so now that we ha we've understood it at a molecular level, let's link this to our understanding um, of reaction pathways and reaction energetics. So let's um, complete the 
complete the visualization of the different aspects. So, um, we look here at an uncatalyzed and a catalyzed reaction. Um, so let's have a little bit of review about our reaction energies. Looking at these two reactions, are they endothermic or exothermic? Right? They are exothermic. How did we figure that out? Right? This is always about the energy difference between the reactants and products. And we see that the products are lower in energy than the reactants. So we would say that's negative delta H, and heat will be released. Alrighty. Now, which reaction is um, catalyzed? So we have the reaction on the left, and we have the reaction on the right. To look for the catalyst, right, what do we do? We look at the activation energies. So we see with this first reaction, we have a very large activation energy. And with the second reaction, it is much smaller. So the reaction on the right is the one that was, has the catalyst present. And we recognize that because we see a smaller activation energy, which corresponds to a faster reaction rate. Okay, so we've already taken care of this. We've already drawn in the activation energy. Okay, so now let's see, what else do we notice about these two graphs? Um, does the enzyme change the energies of the reactants and products? If we look back here, what do we notice? No, right? No, the enzyme does not change the energies of the reactants and products, right? So no, and so what does that mean, right? There's no change in delta H, right? The delta H, the value is the same for both reactions. Remembering that delta H, the enthalpy, is determined from the energy difference between the reactants and products. So, does an enzyme change the equilibrium amounts of reactants and products? So, we would say no, right? Um, because the equilibrium is determined Not my best writing, right? Determined by delta H. So equilibrium is all about thermodynamics. All right. So catalysts are all about, right? So what does an enzyme do? So an enzyme is a catalyst. And what they do is they lower the activation energy to increase the reaction rate. So the catalyst doesn't change the destination, right? So, so thermodynamics we can think of as the destination. The enzyme is the catalyst, it's the rate. So remember that the term we use there is kinetics. So enzymes tell us how fast we get to our destination. And it's the thermodynamics that tells us about the destination, where we're going. Because we typically, energetically, we always want to go to the lowest energy. All righty. Okay, so that wraps up our introduction to enzymes, looking at it at both a chemical level and the interactions between the enzyme and the substrate. And then taking that interaction and showing how we represent it symbolically on reaction energy diagrams. So, and then just keeping in mind the difference between thermodynamics and kinetics. So when we're talking about enzymes, it's all about kinetics and speeding up reactions. Please take some time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.